All right, so today uh, we're going to talk about process planning. So once you've got a set of drawings, how do you plan to make it? So what, what do you do to, to, to figure out how you, what do you need to do and in what order and all that? <clears throat> so that's process planning. Um, first thing, we need to have a good bill material. So what, what is a bill material? The list of all the things needed to make that part. Yeah, the list of all the things needed to make that, that assembly, right? So it's going to be kind of a table, and we're going to have maybe like the part number, right? Part number, a description, quality. Uh, how many you going to use? Yeah, quantity. 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 What else? And this might be more than what we put on the bill material on the drawings. On the drawings, we've got the little bill material too, oh, right? What is made Here out we've of got a bigger one. So yeah, material. Material. Yeah, material made out of. What else? What else would we like to know, just as an overall of all the parts? Price. What? Price. Oh, no. Location. Um, maybe if it's a purchase part. Um, yeah. So. And we can even calculate that for manufacturing parts too, right? <clears throat> so, price, what else? What else would be good to know about the overall? So, part number, description, quantity, material, cost. Yeah, if it's a purchase part. So. That, so that could be self or it could be who you're buying it from. What else? There's something else we're, we're missing. What would be a good thing to know about something just to be able to look at it from a table? There's two more things I'm thinking about. Item number? That goes back to part number. So maybe that's part or drawing number. That could be two different things. But what else? I don't know if this is it, but I know like at Westmark they had, if it's an assembly composed of multiple different assemblies, they had a section that said whether the part you're adding in is a part, a single item, or a sub-assembly. Oh, that might, been, so that, that would be a good thing on this also. And usually the way I handle that is, and so that's in the, depends, it could be a checkbox for part or assembly. Mm -hmm. do it, I usually keep like my numbering system. I use full digits for, for assemblies, dashes for parts, and then I'll sometimes break down even further than that. So like under this moment, it was 2-1 um, is the weldment, then 2-2, uh, T2-2, 2B, 3L, 3S, those are the, the parts within that. Uh, so you kind of, depending on how you want to figure out the numbering system, that could be part of it. And also, I do like indents and stuff to, to help do that also sometimes. Um, so you can also call it a core sheet, but maybe put some more stuff on it. But that might be part of assembly. What's another one that we might want to put? I know this could probably go under description, but like if you're using bolts and nuts, uh, thread and pitch. Yeah, that'd probably, yeah, that'd probably be that'd under description. Right? Color. What else? What? Color. Color. So finish. Finish. So that was one of the two. There's one more thing I'm thinking about that we should oh, probably put on that list. 
something having to do with uh, packaging? No, for par this is for parts that we're making. So if it's, would you put it on if it's cast molded or would you put that on there? Not really, but that kind of goes into it. And so maybe size, right? So the raw size. Oh yeah, oh. raw dimensions. Yeah, so. So how well big it is when you're starting the process. So is it going to be a piece of? Uh, so like. Well, we that, have a, that could also be used. That way, if you do need to package it, you know the overall size you yeah. know what box to get. Yeah. Or, and then you can also have a finished size. Because if this was here, and that was one in seven, eight. By two. Sure. And then that's like half an inch, or whatever. Whatever those are. And then it's a quarter inch thick. That could be quarter inch plate. Two inch or it could be two inch by quarter inch strip and then have have it cut here and sheared off. So there's a few different ways we could make this. But what size are we gonna start with? So you'd probably start with a, a quarter by two by one seven eighths. So that'd be your raw size. So you get something like that. So that way you know where you're starting with the material. <coughs> And so a lot of this you can get from the drawings themselves. So like on that part, we can see the overall size of it. We can look down here and see the material. Uh, we can see the part number, the title. So we can see all that stuff and kind of pull that into this one sheet. And I usually like to do this, this final build material in Excel. That's a good place to do it. Um, some people will have a template set up in Word to fill it in. Yep. Doesn't uh, Revit or Inventor and AutoCAD both have a feature for that? They both have a... Yeah, Revit? and they, you can also use the, the, the build material feature within Inventor and add these extra fields. So you just do one extra, one bigger build material. So you'd have one bill material for the drawings that's kind of condensed, and then one larger bill material for a title page, so just by bringing in the other fields. So it could be done that way too. Or it could be done out of a, a PLM system, a, a, a database that organizes all the drawings depending on how they're doing it. <coughs> but whatever it is, some, usually you'd want to have something like this, or either you'd give it to the shop, or the shop would have to make this on their own, so they know what kind of all the different pieces of what they need to, to make the final thing. And for each part, we want to do an operation sheet. So we want to figure out what we need to do to make each part. So we put in the part name, the number, material, drawing number, and then we'd figure out what operations do we need. So like on this one, let's <laughs> Go to stop. So on that one, what would probably be the, the first operation? So actually, before that, what, what material do we use for this? Steel. So we have steel. What, what type of steel? Well, I mean, what would we start with? Quarter inch. Yeah, we'd use start with something that's quarter inch. We'd see if we can get some strip or or do we need to get a sheet that's bigger and shorter or cut it out with a, a plasma to get it tighter? How? So if we could find a three quarter by two and a half inch strip, we just need to be able to cut it into three inch sections or, or bar, right? So we get three quarter by two and a half, we just cut it into three inch sections. If we get three quarter by three, we cut it into two and a half inch sections, right? So that would be our first step. All right, so we start with a rectangle. So, so we would 
that's our, our material. And then operation number one, what would that be? Well, let's, let's say we already got the, the blank size. Uh, milling. What? Mill. Mill on what? Corners. Yeah, the corners. So those could be milled off. Um, how would we mill it? Would we set it down flat and do it like that, or would we set it at an angle and just cut it off? Depending on what it's like tool. Yeah, it depends on your tools. So it would probably be easier, and it would probably be a better finish, right, if you if you set up it up like this and then cut across like that to cut it. Mm -hmm. So you'd need a jig, right? You'd need mm -hmm. something to hold that in the spot. You could also have a jig to hold it and then use a saw to cut it. You get that? Depending on what finish you wanted, right? So let's say we're going to use the mill. So operation number M1. Corners, controlling, whatever. And maybe this is a, a two part jig, one to hold it this way, one to flip it over and hold it the other way. So you can cut position one to cut one side, flip it over to the other position, cut the second side. And just keep all training through. <clears throat> then, kind of, how much time would that set you can set up? Um, More than 10 minutes. 20 minutes. Then that, that's for the setting up the, the machine. So saying, putting the jig in, loading the program. Okay. And then the, the production, that's how many can you make in an hour. So let's say that takes three minutes to run and it cuts two at a time. So it's basically one and a half minutes each. So you've got, I don't know. 45, 50 an hour. What is it, 15 an hour? Because maybe you could ramp the speed up. <clears throat> so we'll just say 15 an hour on that. And then we move on to, to operation two. Oops. So then after you do that, what would be the next thing to do? Milling out the. Yeah. Cut out the slots, right? Yep. <clears throat> and then, so you cut out the slots. That'd be a hard one. And so. Yeah, that that slot. What could they make that easier to make? Go all the way through. Where do we go? Instead of a stop, instead of a stopping. No, the groove. Oh, the groove. Yeah, go all the way through this way. Yeah, yeah that'd make it a lot easier, right? Or if I wanted that to be blind here, just make that a, a radius, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Don't make it square know. corners. But then you'd have to change your. Uh, and so, yeah, you'd have to change the other part. So. And that would make cutting that other part a little harder. But cutting this with sharp corners, that's going to be really hard, right? So that's something to look at. Okay, is this easier to make? Then they might see that and go, okay, let's do an engineering change request. Send it back to engineering and see if they can change it. Yeah. Making those corners, though, like depending on what your clearance tolerances are, you know, like if you have, you know, pretty big tolerances, it doesn't have to exactly be a corner. But this is pretty tight. It, it's pretty tight fit. It is. But I'm just saying it all depends, right? On the part, like yeah. if the tolerance is yeah. forgiving, yeah. then you could always leave a little bit of a radius in. Yeah. And it could also put a smaller radius. And that'd be easier to do on the other part also. And then that way they can come in with the end mill that's maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. They can do a pass there, come around another pass. So they put a quarter inch in the mill, that'd be a sixteenth of an inch radius there, right? Or an eighth of an inch radius. So that, that'd give them a little radius to make it a lot easier to machine. <clears throat> so we do the next, go back to our operation chart, put in that, and then you probably have it cut that, drill and tap on the mill, just in one operation. <clears throat> or you can take it over and drill press it, but Probably, probably easier just to have it cut it, do it, drill it, tap it, all all while it's in the machine, right? And again, so it have.
do all that one operation. Yeah, and if you had a four axis, you could have it spin in. If you were five axis, you could just do it all. So depending on what machines you had, you you do it differently. It's gonna take a little longer to set up. Only twenty minutes on that one. Yeah, because it's still just changing a fixture plate. Oh, okay. And then but this is a little bit longer, so we'll do thirty an hour. So now it's got to melt a slot, drill it, tap it, go to the second one, do the same thing. So we're just making up five right now. <laughs> the more steps, the more. Yeah. Less you move. Because Yeah, and we would still have another two position jig. Is that? That's really specific. So instead of doing all all the left side and all the right side, you do a jig where you got the jig set up. You got a slot here for one and a slot there for another one, or or even maybe you got multiple, two for the left side, two for the right side, whatever it takes to fill up the table in the middle. And that way, you just load it, you hit go. It does more than one part at a time. And you take all the parts out, put a whole new batch in. Then you have the machine running longer at one time. <coughs> so we, we do this. So after you figure out, out that, we'll do a flow process. So how's it going to move in the shop? Or task one, stem one, and that's an operation. And then after we get done the mill, the first mill, is it going to go, where, what's it going to do? Is it going to go somewhere for storage? Is it going to go move to another mill that's doing the second operation? Um, what's it doing? So maybe we've got one mill that's doing the first operation, a second mill that's doing the second operation. So now it's going to transport, and then we'll have mill two in the second operation. So that's... Wait a minute. If I'm just, if, if like if you do uh, mill it once, right? Before you keep pro, you know, going on with the processes, wouldn't you want to inspect it? Make oh, sure that process is good. That might be a good thing. So instead of that going straight to the mill, you do an inspection there. Wouldn't that depend on like the tolerances required for the, that operation? Yeah. Because that was just cut the corners. They're cutting the corners might not be. As yeah. So depending on those corners might not even be important. But, so. Because like that's just an appearance thing. But if, if the slots was first, then yeah. And you might want to inspect it first to make sure that it's square. So, right, because that part had some pretty specific tolerances for parallelism and everything. So you might want to do inspection first. Or maybe it need to be face milled first to make sure it's true before you started cutting on it. So maybe we would actually want to start out of a bigger piece so we could cut it down to the right size. So we'd want to start out of a, a, uh, a 7 8 by 3 inch piece by a little bit longer than 3. So we can cut some material off of it. Or 3 and a quarter, or 2 or 2 and some, 2 and, two and 3 quarters. What? Whatever your shear amount. Yeah. Yeah, so make sure you got enough space that it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out right. And tie those tolerances, you're going to have to waste a little bit more material because you can't start with just the raw material usually. So we'd, we'd put that in, put it in the machine, put it in the, again the tooling that we were using, so the jig, jig numbers. So now we can see how it's going to move through the shop. When we're going to have inspections, does it going to get delayed somewhere? Is it going to go to storage sometime? So are they going to do a bunch of these and store them and then pull them out and come back to them? How are they, how are they going to do that? So questions on this? For the next one, we'll do an operational chart. So now we'll take, this is, before we're looking at just each part by itself, now we're looking at the whole assembly. So each one of these columns is a part. Now we're just going to put in the, um, put in the operations that are being done on each part. 
not worrying about transportation or delays or any of that. Uh, the number in here, that's the number from here. And so we can kind of see how they come together when they join for assemblies, uh, when we have inspections, kind of going down the whole the whole process. One piece just what? gets inspection. What? The wood seat just gets inspection. Yeah, that's probably a purchase part, right? <laughs> right. It has no processes here. It just comes straight down. To assembly. Straight Jumps right into an assembly. <laughs> so that's a purchase part. Yeah, I and mean, then part. You know what that line is? It just hopped over that like. Yeah. Up. Yeah. It's just like on yeah, a when, circuit. Yeah. The little thing here means that they don't actually connect. Yeah. That, that means that. They were too lazy to draw it there. <laughs> You'd be surprised uh, we, when I was working at uh, Foster Farms, like this badass supposedly engineer for water lines. We were supposed to put a valve in to shut off city water. <coughs> he didn't do that on any of the crossings. And there's like, in his blueprint, there's like 10 or 20, you know, so it's like, so you think you have that? all these? Yeah, we didn't know if that was it. Like, it's like, dude, are you serious? I lost. Yeah, a bunch of unions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, water pressure. so yeah, it's like, is this is this a? You got this going this way, that way, that way. Yeah. So also, this is not going all together. It'll work. Also, if you yeah. notice here, it in the parentheses it has how many there are for the assembly. So there's two of those, four of those, four of those. Here we have a left-handed one and a right-handed one. So like on these chairs, the arms, the left and the one that, or, yeah, it's these ones. <laughs> <laughs> on, on chairs no, that have arms, about, you have a, a left side and a right side. You know, they're, they're exactly the same, but they're mirror images. So you do just a drawing of one, and you tell them to make left and right. So like left side's shown, right side opposite. So they know we can just flip it over and make it the other side. And so that's what they did here. And there's a left and right. So we kind of know what goes together. Questions? And then, um, if you have a shop, you'd also do a flow diagram. So, um, so, you, so like a shop, you've got there's mill one, mill two, whatever you have, all the equipment laid out on the shop. And you'd want to do. And then you do. Because you wouldn't want your mill one at this corner and your mill two at the bottom corner. Yeah. And then having to run it back over here to store it and run back over here. To yeah, and so that's part of how how's the shop laid out. So if they're making the same kind of thing, they'll usually group things to make it easier to make whether or it's going to be all the mills together. Or they'll do machine centers where you've got a mill and a lathe and a bandsaw all right next to each other. So you can go from the bandsaw to the mill to the lathe and, and keep it all just real close. And it depends on what type of product they're making. Do they want to have all of the same type of machining together, or do they want to have different clusters around? <clears throat> but you'd actually draw out to show kind of where things are going. Okay? So that's the flow diagram. So, any questions? Did you guys have a class project today? If you could guess what it was. Do that. Yes. Do not. You are going to do an operational sheet for a class project. So entire cla class? a class lab. All of you, you're, you're going to figure out how to break it down by pe by people. Wait. Yeah, no, we're missing quite a few. Yeah, <laughs> we're missing quite a few. <laughs> well, the people that are here are going to get credit for it. That works. <clears throat> so, you guys need to get, to get together. Figure out how you're going to break this down. I've already got it broken into sub-assemblies and everything. So you need to do... Um, you got to individual parts, then assemblies, and then... Yeah, so I want the... Assembly. Um, I want the operation sheet for each part, the flow process chart for each part, and then the operation process chart, the big one, for the whole assembly. Um, Can this do sometime next semester? Let's <laughs> do it Thursday. <laughs>
we're going to talk about it. Also, I included this little chart. Um, and actually, in the in the H folder, I put a subfolder called Process Control that has the vice drawing assembly. I have a, this chart here on a, on finishes so that for the specific tolerances, you can see what types of toler what types of processes can make those tolerances. So if you have something that's eight thousandths of an inch, you're not going to be able to just mill it. Or eight ten thousandths of an inch, you're not going to be able to mill it. You're going to have to come up and do... Most of our green. stuff, most of our green stuff green. only goes to thousandths though, right? Uh, I've got some pretty There's good one ten thousandths. I, um, I also put an operation sheet on here for you. Yeah, ours just goes to thousands. <laughs> well, you can add, add extra lines, right? You can just right click and insert a, insert a row to add more, add more rows if you want. Right? Just right click. Nope, nope there's more than thousands. Insert, row above. Do that. We need more rows. But, uh, we don't have it noted right here. How uh, this, and I also have the, the flow chart as an AutoCAD drawing. So, you just put the text in there. Yeah, I didn't put any text up here, so you're gonna have to put that in. But I did put. I'm gonna just it copy in here. that one. So you can just take this one and copy it down for all the rows. I'm copy or array it. Um, and then you'd have to put in your own text up here. So you might want to put guy. the text in here, have someone put the text in, save it, and then pass off, to, then give it out to everyone else. Um, you can also change these over to attributes if you want. That'd yeah, be, we all have to have our own. Yeah, you're all going to do your pieces and put them back all together, and you'll, we'll, just, we'll go over it all together next Thursday. Oh, so we're doing device, device, and just pick the part we want to talk about. No, the, the whole, you guys need to break it apart yourself and what parts you're doing. For, well, this, oh, is, no. this is a double part. <laughs> so, all right, um, it looks like the group's starting to get together. It's like 16 sheets, parts. Yep. Yeah, seven. But that's and there's only five people. Okay, so that's three parts each. Nine, but that's including assemblies and some assemblies. Yeah, that's too much. Plus the pins. You're not drawing them. But, well, the pins are. You're not, not drawing, drawing them. them. You're not drawing these. You're just doing the, the process so chart. Do, do we have to do uh, the pin? Or is that, uh -huh. is that an order in part? That's a, that's an order okay. part. Pins the, are screw the, lock, the locking pin, yeah. They ordered. The, the pin right there? Yeah, it's ordered. Order uh, it's a purchase part, right? Okay. Purchase. Ordered part. And screws are ordered. You just need to do this for the parts that we're making. All right, so good. Right. So make make the material, figure out everything that needs to go into it, do all the operation charts and everything, and have some fun. We don't know the easy ones. We always do.